Name another podcast like this. Who gonna bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend? For? Check it, check it, check it. It's using Costa. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know me there, walk on. Man, hey, we got a special guest in here, y'all, today. Man, she's from California, man. And what, like, I'm going to get specific. What part of California? It's, uh, sa- what is it? It's Sacramento. I'm Sacramento. Wow. I'm a capital city chick. Say, all the way to Dallas, Texas. And this is our first time in Dallas, y'all. Check it, man. Check it, man. Miss Martina, a.k.a. Hustle Mom, is going down in Boss Talk 101 today. What's going on? Man, I'm just in your beautiful city, and uh, this is the first time I've been in uh, Dallas, and, uh, you know, um, I'm just wanting to, you know, see some more of Dallas. I haven't been doing anything, but... uh, You haven't turned up yet. I haven't turned up yet. I've been just (laughs) taking care of business, going to Austin for that one Mm -hmm. uh, event they had. South by Southwest. Yes, and... um, you know, coming here to boss Ex- talk. Exactly. You know, boss talk one on one while the boss is talk. Yes, and um, me and Ken, you know, pimping Ken, and um, we're doing a uh, podcast called A View from the Game. Mm-hmm. Shout out! And um, so that's what I'm here for too. You know, we're going across country and um, getting a view from the game from different, you know, d- d- divisions and different, you know, cities with different cultures. But what we do have in common is this ism. And, um, you know, changing your life over and transitioning. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing about our show. You know, people that's been in the game and transitioning to something else because you can't do this forever and ever and ever. You know, it's in you, not on you, but, Mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 you know, it. It, it, it expires. I got it. So I know when we were in um, New Jersey, we interviewed with you, which that's coming out soon. But we want to get more in depth with what we were talking about. And I know when you said um, you started out in this lifestyle, what you started out seeing was your brothers, right? So how old were you when you decided that you wanted to do this? And then how did you step out and get your first um, P? Is that what? First pimp. Okay. The first pimp. How old were you when you actually did that? And how did you? I was 20. You were 20? I was 20 years old. Like, I've been new about the game. But I've been, like, you know, breaking on boys and breaking on dudes and all that. But actually, like, activating my hoeing and hitting a concrete, Mm -hmm. hitting the concrete, going to a red light district, Mm -hmm. actually selling my body. I was 20 years old. It was June 1st, 1985. Mm, You know the exact date. I know. It was a Saturday night in San Francisco, and it was lit. But you said one of your brothers were sort of like protected because in the story you told, you said that whenever he was coming to the house, y'all would run inside and put on like longer pants and That's stuff like that. That's when I was like a teenager. When you were a teenager. But so I'm I would 20, think, I'm grown. Right, I would think I that he was still. I had a baby at 17, so, set, uh, so 20. I'm grown. I wish a motherfucker would tell me something. <laughs> you know, I'm grown, grown. I didn't have a baby. Oh, okay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? My brothers cross country. Okay. They doing their own thing and I decided to get down with the get down. Okay. So, like, when I was younger, yeah, we were scared of our brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, strict, like, do right in school, do this, do that. But I'm a 20-year-old woman working mm-hmm. at the post office, sorting mail. Wasn't and, making enough money. And it wasn't making enough money, and I needed a rainbow-bright bedroom set for my beautiful little daughter. Okay. And I just went. It started on the weekend, and it just was, like, full-blown. Once you get that money. How much money did you make that first time? The first night. I made five hundred dollars, and I was with a white girl named Kim. She had blue eyes and uh, blonde hair, and this um, Italian girl named Terry. Mm-hmm. But like I said before in one of my interviews, I don't think that my night would have turned out that spectacular had I been by myself or with some other black girls. Mm-hmm. And that's not knocking black girls. I'm saying white girls can get in places where other people can't. Right. And then I'm with, I'm a cute black girl, and I'm with the Italian girl and a mm-hmm. blind girl. We looking like a girl group, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, or Charlie's Angels. 
And it was no I'm denying us. You know what I'm saying? We, anybody, any trick that's seen us, you know, they giving us what we wanted. How did you choose your pimp? How did I choose my pimp? Because you, you end up with them, so you end up with their pimp. No, no, no. 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 So no. you just walked out on the track and be like, this is what I want to do that night. You no, didn't have a no, pimp that I night? Wanted, I wanted, no, I didn't. Okay, so you did not have a pimp. No, I went out with them, and I turned out. But they did have a man, but he was like a dope boy. Oh. Yeah, so I was out there. When I was out there on the track, I ran into a real pimp. Mm. And, you know, like, he wasn't no dope dealer. He wasn't selling dope. He was straight getting it from the womb. Mm -hmm. And his name was Curtis Good up out of mm. Berkeley, California. Wow. Yeah, and he was a finesse pimp. Real calm. Real mellow. He wasn't, you know, beating women and, mm -hmm. you know, really calm. Mm -hmm. Talk to you and everything. Because you knew about the game, so you knew what to look right. for, what not to look for, right. and all of that. So I liked him. Okay. But, okay, so he got really sick, and he died. Mm. So he was your first pimp? He was my first. So you chose him, or he chose you? I'm, how a pimp choose you? I don't know. That I would think how it go. If that's not how it go. I don't Man, know. I'm asking. He spent his pimping at me. Okay. And I chose up. Oh, little. you chose. Okay. Got yeah, it. A man, a pimp don't choose, choose, choose up. I mean, I choose down. Okay. I mean, uh, choose up. Mm -hmm. He turn up. You know what <laughs> I'm saying? Because like I was talking to somebody earlier and I was saying for y'all, what you, you call me green because I don't know a lot of stuff about, you know, the business and stuff like that. And I only know from what I see on TV and when I see pimps or hoes or anything like that I, what i do see i see whether them being controlling them if you step out of place they might beat you they might this that you know but somebody's telling me it's not always like that it's not like that that shit is like tv you know and that's where you feel you see these imposters you know they're not real pimps mm -hmm. these imposters they watch those same shows you watch and they do that to bitches and then give them a bad taste in their mouth about the game because they done ran across an imposter. Mm -hmm. But real pimping, real pimping ain't going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Real pimping going to make you a better bitch. Mm. And that's what I know. You know what I'm saying? I was raised around it. And how does that make you better? Because then a couple of things that because I was... Because some bitches don't know what to do. Like okay. I seen a lady that lived down the street from me. She was a big, fat, brunette, white girl. Mm -hmm. And I seen her a year later. She was skinny and she had blonde hair. I said, bitch, Pippin, been good to you. I mean, she been on all the whole strolls. That bitch lost all that weight. She was looking good. She did something for her family to pimp. You know, helped her. You know what I'm saying? Put her in school. She would have never made all those, you know what I'm saying, endeavors. She would have never completed all these endeavors that she have achieved in her so life. So I still go to school and do all that stuff? Yes, if okay. you got a good one. Okay. It's not dead. I'm just going to look you guys in the eye. Pimping ain't dead. It's just some imposters out there. Okay. You know, and I'm not telling girls to, to go, go out do, there and right. choose and all that. I'm not condoning that because I'm retired. Right. I'm retired. <laughs> if a motherfucker come up with some big old money, you know, <laughs> I'm taking it. You know okay. what I'm saying? But dusting then, them hoes who I'm, I'm dusting them whole wheels off. <laughs> but then, like the first night when you were out there by yourself and you got the five hundred dollars, that went straight to you. I went by you. myself. I was with the girls. So you still had to share that money with the girls? No, 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 no. They was helping me, but that I, you know, I went and bought my daughter. But that, all that five hundred dollars goes straight to it you. It was me. It was me. But then, when you have a pimp, you got to pay him or give him the money, right? Sure do. Okay, so every last cent. Every last cent. Every last cent. Because what he does, he pays your bills. He he does takes a lot. care of you. He, he shows, pays, gets your hair knowledge. done. Well, you everything. know, what, like people like feel like, oh, that's your money that he's doing this with. Okay, but like I got with like Kenny Red, he had hella bitches. Like when I got with Kenny Red, I wanted to be a part of his organization. It was dangerous, but it was exciting, you know. And I seen how his bitches looked and I seen how he handled his business. So I chose him upon those qualities. And I and felt you like had a pimp at another pimp at that time. You left him and went with Kenny. I left Red. him and went with Kenny, okay. but he got sick and he passed away. Mm -hmm. The first dude. Mm. Kurt died, you know. Rest in peace, Kurt is good. Rest Up in out peace. of Berkeley, man, you know? Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, so that's how I got with Kenny. Mm -hmm. So when I got with Kenny, I was a ready made bitch. Okay. I had my own car, own crib. You know what I'm saying? And he liked that. Mm -hmm. So I had all, everything, furs, everything. I was a ready made bitch. Mm -hmm. You know, I can get in my car and go where I want to, jump in the plane, go across country, you know what I'm saying, and be on automatic. Mm -hmm. You know, so it wasn't like. You know, when I got with Kenny, or I helped Kenny with his, you know, me and him were like dank together, you know what I'm saying? And, and how long you were with we, Kenny for? I was with Kenny for about like seven years. Seven years, okay. Yeah, Kenny had shit already. I had stuff already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We build, you know. Mm -hmm. But No, so, because I'd be like, okay, so what's the difference between ha um, having a pimp compared to you just have a husband or a boyfriend or something? Because he, a boyfriend or a husband, he still will pay for your hair done, your nails done, pay the bills, do all of that sort of stuff. So what's the difference? Except from That's what you're pimp going, is. Pimp is your boyfriend, is your, boyfriend. your daddy, your except, grandpa. Except you're going that. out here and sleeping with other men. Yeah, and... You using you using condoms, so you so like a square would not have no understanding. Of okay, that. but a pimp is gonna love you to death. Mm -hmm. You know, he know you use condoms. Prostitutes are the most cleanest females in That's the world. That's what I was wondering because you know we are so clean. Okay, like we keep our coochie wax. You know, we wear the best of the best. We smell. And you good. use condoms with everybody. Everybody. I mean, even with a jack off. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like we ain't touching it. All. Prostitutes do? I mean, real ones. Okay. Like, some of them out there doing something strange for some change. But with your pimp, you don't. What? Use a condom? Use condoms. No. But then that same pimp is also sleeping with his other hoes, too. And that's why I used to make sure all my wife-in-laws... And that's what you call them, wife-in-laws. Wife-in-laws okay. go to the clinic. Okay. But it ain't like the pimp... Well, I know my pimp ain't just running up in the bitch soon as he get her. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like... You, a bitch got to give a pimp some money first before they get get to go right. inside of them. Right. And a lot of guys, they break those rules. Mm -hmm. Like, they see the bitch and she's so pretty and fine and thick and the first thing they want to do is have sex with them. And, th and then guess what? She she gone like Susie Wong. Mm. She done ran off. She didn't got what she wanted. She did testing. She didn't seen it. She didn't got it. What am I staying here for? Have you ever seen where, um, like, I'm going to give Kenny Red an example, but, and it may not ever happen to you, but all the hoes he had and say he was sleeping with all of them. Um, do they ever get jealous of each other? Um, they probably do, but they better keep it to themselves in Kenny Red house. Uh, mm. Cause he didn't play that jealousy stuff. Mm. And me, I'm a different type of woman. They, they were green. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was exposed to this. So, you know, I knew how this goes. Like, I just see my brothers with their women and how they got alone and they better not ask no questions or anything like that. So my man, my mentality was always, mm -hmm. you know, with this ism. So mm -hmm. I think different than other people. Let me ask you this. Um, when you you guys, it's a structure. You mm -hmm. you hear the term bottom bitch. You hear the term first, second string, third string. Like explain that to to the listeners, right? Like uh, like because I'm green. Uh, just give us a, a spiel on uh kind of kind of how they go. Okay, a bottom bitch is a bitch that's been there the longest. That's been there. That is you know it's like the top of the the um cream of the crop. Right, you know. And she's been there the longest. She's been through everything. You know, then it's like first string, second string, third string. Like, third strings is kind of like fly by nights. They, they, they're just there and here okay. and gone. You know what I'm saying? First strings is the ones that's going to be there through thick and thin that's been there. Like how I was with Kenny. Mm -hmm. Or like my wife-in-laws have been there for four and five years. Them are first strings. You know what I'm saying? We starters. We get into the money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's, then it's second strings that want to elevate to become first strings. You know what I'm saying? It's just different levels. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's just if you want to level up, bitch, and you know what I'm saying, and be a starter, you know what I'm saying? Get your money up, you know what I'm saying? And get your, get your, get your, just level up. What's the most money you've ever made for Kenny Red in one night? In one night, um... Probably, I don't know about like ten thousand. Wow, 
Ten thousand, man. Uh, I mean, and and, and and I gotta ask you this, man, because this is something that you know. This uh, there's a big uh, umbrella when it comes down to uh, pimping and holding the best thing going. When you think about Las Vegas, is that the best place to get money? It's you can get money at the grocery store, in the frozen food section. You know what I mean? Like you can get money wherever it is. Like I'm a professional. Like I know how to look at a man and can tell he big tricky. Or he big police, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Or he big pimping, you know what I'm saying? I could tell. You could tell, you know what I'm saying? You can get money wherever you go. If you a raw bitch like me, you know what I'm saying? I can freelance, I can hit the carpet, I can hit the concrete. Shit, I can get money in a boardroom meeting, you know? But wow. just like I hear some pimps say, um, you don't strive to pimp forever. So with a hoe, I'm sure you don't try, try to be a hoe forever. No, you but want I'm not fucking for free. Okay. I don't give a fuck. I'm never fucking for free. So I'm not going to wait till I get this old and be like, oh, I'm going to decide to fuck for free. No, I'm not hoeing forever, but I'm going to be a hoe. I'm going to keep them whole ways. Drop your books, lose your lessons. Mm -hmm. And I'm not dropping my books. But when I'm not never having sex for, for free. free. Even if I get married. If my husband don't do right by me, I'm turning my back on him. Mm. And you understand if your husband don't do right, you ain't giving him no poo nani nani nani. <laughs> and you deserve it. Not like you're being a spoiled brat or whatever. I earned this. I worked for this. But when you're with a pimp, are you allowed to have a boyfriend? Hell to the motherfucking no. <laughs> to the no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know because I'm like. Oh, my God. This is so funny. No. <laughs> okay. You are devoted okay. to that man. To that man. Right. Okay. And any bitches out here with these boyfriends and them are imposters, boyfriend pimps and whole bitch. Like I heard that that expression. Oh, this is my whole bitch. What is a whole bitch? Well, she my girlfriend, but she my whole too. Mm. Man, is she your whole or is she not? You're right. Because there's nothing wrong with being a whole. Mm. Like I said, holes is the, they clean, they smell good, they're loyal. You know what I'm saying? And hoe is short for hooker. Mm -hmm. People use the word so loosely. A hoe is not a bad word. Slut, that's a bad word. Okay. You a slut. Okay. You're doing this shit for free. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You a throat baby. Mm -hmm. You know, a hoe is a classy word to me. Because I think it's the top of the food line. Because when I was hearing, um, when I was listening to is like Miss America to me. <laughs> Hoes is the shit. Because when I was hearing about pimps and how some pimps, if you are top, I'm going to say top notch pimp, um, you're supposed to be almost like setting a 401k up for your hoe. You put money to the side to make sure that when she done, so to say. Not every bitch. You got to treat bitches accordingly. Okay. That like would be she, your bottom one then. Your bottom bitch that's been down with that's you. That's the one you put something aside that when she yeah, but retire, you, even, even you if, got some money. Even if it's one that's been there after your bottom bitch, like. The bitches that are down, it's just not about a bottom bitch. It's about the bitches that are down for you. That you seen have been down with you when things were tough, she stayed down. Mm. When things was up, she stayed down. Mm. This bitch deserves something. I'm going to make sure this bitch got something. She didn't made me, you know, looked out for me. I didn't bought my mom a house. I didn't like how, you know, Rome was talking about. Like, mm -hmm. the bitch been down with me. And Rollo. That's why I just love Rollo the Pimp. You know what I'm saying? Because he keeps it so real. Shout like, out to Rollo the Pimp. Shout out to Rollo the Pimp, man. Let me tell you something. Now, he is the type that was going to make sure his female got everything. You know what I'm saying? Because a bitch is a reflection of her man. Right. How you going to just get everything from this woman and not do anything for her? Mm -hmm. And how a bitch going to stay around and let somebody do her like that? Because I'm not staying around for that. That's real. That's real. Yeah, I'm not staying around for that. We in this together. It's us. You know what I'm saying? We are a family. Even if I got other wife-in-laws, that bitch cold, I'm going to put a blanket on her. Mm -hmm. That bitch want to eat. She hungry. I'm going to feed that bitch. Because guess why? Because she with my man. And we're paying the same man. And so she's very important. I got to ask you this, and I don't, uh, um, and you don't have to give me too much de detail on it, but I know losing Kenny Ray was a devastating loss. Like, just give me some uh, understanding of, of how big of a loss it was and how much it changed your life. Kenny will always be an essential part of my life. Um, 
I haven't been with him for like 25 years, but we always was friends, you know? So <clears throat> who I really feel bad for is the female who just was with him, with him. and made a meal for him. You know, um, I really feel bad for her. I have a lot of empathy and sympathy for her. And it's so unfair, you know, because everybody see me and think, oh, Kenny Red, Kenny Red. You know, um, I feel real bad that Kenny Red died. We got a lot of things we were, we were trying to do. We were trying to do a movie, a lot of things. And I feel so awful that he was just took away from us like that, you know? What was, um, what was one of the last things that he, he said to you? Well, we did our last interview together yeah. mm -hmm. um, with Soft White Underbelly, and then I did No Jumper with the Sharp Tank, and he was so proud of that wow. interview, you know what I'm saying? So that was the last time I communicated with Kenny. Wow. And um, my uh, interview with the Sharp Tank, um, No Jumper, the coolest podcast in the world. Yeah, yeah, you know. I've seen those guys. Shout out. Uh -huh, shout out to Sharp. They've been, they they actually been breaking up. There's some stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, Sharp, there. yeah, I'm so proud of Sharp. I've been seeing him, you know, just evolve. But um, he put the interview out August 11th, and Kenny died wow. September 6th. Wow. And I was just so happy that he, was he got a chance to see, to see that see interview it. and to get my poem that I wrote him. I wrote a poem called Kenny Red. Hey, oh, yeah, that's hard, so, man. Yeah, I, I wrote him a poem, and he loved it. He laughed because um, that's one thing Kenny really loved about me. Because I had an opinion, and I kept him laughing, and I was funny and effervescent all the time. Like, and uh, he said it. I'm one of his favorite hoes, Man. and I'm I'm very privileged to even had paid his pimping. You know what I mean? You guys might not understand that as being squares, but it was a privilege. To pay Kenny Red's pimping one time, man. Hey, <laughs> to all the sixteens and the three hundred fours out there, y'all feel me though, you know. Yeah. So when you think about Kenny Red, like, um, you know, what do you think that he would want for you, like right now? He would want for me to be walking in a fashion week. He would want me to be acting. He would want me to be on big platforms like this one, hey. doing my thing. You know, the marathon still continues. He would want me to be a, a consultant director for the movie so we can get him right. Like, if you ain't playing Kenny Red right or playing me right, then, wait, I need to be there. Like, no, bitch, that ain't how you say it. Mm -hmm. Say it like this, or this mm -hmm. is how you say it. But, yeah, um, I want Kenny's movie, me and Kenny's movie to come out. It's going to mm -hmm. be better than Ike and Tina Turner's. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. Wow. So you think it's going to be better it's going to be way better the than I can Tina Turner. Hell That's yeah. big, man. But Let me uh, tell you something. Who would play Kenny Red? If you had somebody to play Kenny Red, who you think could play him? Any actor. Mike Epps. Mike, Mike Epps. Epps. You think <laughs> Mike Epps would play Kenny? That's Get Kenny's friend. I you know, know it. Just like Kenny. Wow. And you know who I would want to play me? Who? Stunner Girl. <laughs> because she was like real hypey. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah. when I was younger and I was on that concrete, Yeah, I was, I was, I was, I was getting money. I was beating bitches' ass. Like, bitch, don't get it twisted. Don't let this cute, cute face fool you. Stunner Girl remind me so much of me when I was younger, when I was in my 20s. Mm. And then when I got in my 30s and got refined, <laughs> Sweetie reminds me of me. Was and old. now that I'm older, Tina Lawson. Ah. If I can get them three to play a ah. movie with me. You could go all the way to the top, baby. Are you <laughs> so serious? you already been thinking about she this. Knows exactly. I've, been, I've been manifesting a young Martina could be Stunner Girl. The, uh, the When Martina left Kenny and Developed. became a madam, that could be Sweetie. And then Martina now, Tina Lawson. See, is it That would be a challenge for Tina Lawson. You know, she got her husband yeah. as an actor mm -hmm. yeah. to play. An ex prostitute. Mm. Tina, if you watching Tina Lawson, everybody always say I look like you, girl. So I think that um you should make your debut being Hustle Mom Martina. Hey. <laughs> so um you were you said about a madam a while ago. And one thing I've always wondered, for ladies who are hosts for a, a long time, why not turn around and be a pimp after that? Because we don't have a dick 
See, this is what everybody needs to know. A woman cannot, I repeat, cannot be a pimp. Now, girls are players too. And you may can be a Mac, master in the art of communication. But you cannot, I repeat, you cannot be a pimp. No woman can ever be a pimp. I don't care if she's a stud. I don't care what you are. You cannot be a pimp if you don't have a penis. Okay? You could be a madam, but you cannot be a pimp. There's no ladies pimps. That's a myth. Stop saying it. That's blasphemy. What? Well, we, Go ahead. When you see these movies and you see the ladies portraying, you know, different things as if they got girls on them. Right. Are they madams? Is that what you're That's saying? That's what they are. They're madams. Wow. They are straight up madams. That's what a woman is. A woman pimp, a woman who procures dates. A procure, if you look it up, if you Google it, a procure is one who gets clients for the ladies. But in today's society where you have like a lot of studs or you have some females, actually born females, who are, whether they're doing surgeries or, you know, it we want to care. be addressed as a man. I don't care if you got a fake dingling. I don't care what you got. If you wasn't born a man, you cannot be a pimp. That is, that's against the rules. It's a cardinal sin. And other than having a penis, what is it that a pimp does for their hoe that a madam does not do? Well, I know me. When I was a madam, mm -hmm. I would get 60% and give 40. Okay. Because when you take somebody's money, you're taking their responsibilities. You got you taking all their bills. You're taking everything. Their person. That, I've been look at. If I turn you on to a date for a thousand dollars, give me my six hundred. Take your four and get out my door. So you're not paying their bills. You're not, not doing, doing that. Anything. I don't even want to deal with that. That's just too much. Pimping is hard. It's hard. And people think that um, being a pimp, you know what I'm saying, is easy. They have to deal with all these different females' personalities. Some females be crazy as hell. And being a madam is hard also. I don't want to deal with your, your your problems. So just give me my service fee and I'll holla at you when you come back to work tomorrow and I seen you on five more calls, okay? So who's meaner, a madam or a pimp? Um It it depends on who the person is, like you may find a pimp that's not mean. Mm -hmm. You may you might find a madam that's mean as hell and just be talking shit to their girls. And I'm not sending none of my girls know where I'm not going. I'm not money hungry like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not sending you to somewhere. You know, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm sending you to your death. Cause some madams are greedy. They'll send a girl somewhere just to get that service fee. Man, all money ain't good money. I'm not sending nobody. Nowhere where I wouldn't go. Because I watched a movie once where um, they tried to send this girl to a trick. but And that this trick was like well known uh, uh, amongst all the prostitutes that he be doing some crazy stuff to these hoes. And she was crying. She didn't want to go. But he was forcing her to go. The pimp. The pimp. Because she going to get raped, abused, I mean, all sorts of stuff. That's some sick shit. That's on TV. But because, but. That's on TV. So it does not happen that in reality. That don't happen. Hell no. No matter how much money they. tricks go by before I pick the one I want. I'm Susie. I'm snooty my duty. Okay. I don't take any trick. I be like, ugh, your nails dirty. Ugh, your breath stink. No matter how much I, money. I. Well, if it, it depends on how much money, man. you're going you to get in that bathtub and soak. Because now you got my time. Mm -hmm. Time is money. Money is time. So if you give me a certain amount of money, are you getting in this boiling hot water? And I'm boiling you like some eggs. But if it's, uh, but I'm going to date you. You know what I'm saying? If you got that dobre me far so late, dope. Right. If you're a trick, though, and you, like, some of these guys, I've heard crazy stories, and, and, I, and I've seen different things where I talk to different people that say, well, you know, girls tell me, like, no, he just told me, that he'll tell me to go in there and, and, and tell him to go clean it off, and we just rob him. Like, it'd be different cases where they don't always do the job. So, well, see, I ain't never been involved in no low-life stuff like that. Yeah. Robbing clients tricks. Yeah. and tricks and... You know, but you heard stuff. of it, though. Oh, yeah, it goes around all the time, but I'm not going to be looking over my shoulder. 
because they gonna come back and get you. Right. I had like I never was a thief and stuff, but I started stealing when I got with Kenny Red because he had thieves and stuff. So I was like, I'm about to learn how to steal too. So I can go home and save my coochie for him. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I had stole like eight hundred dollars from this trick. And he seen that I stole it, and he did a bad kick and kicked me in my mouth. Wow. Mm. Right here. Oh, yeah. that's that scar. Right there, that's the scar. And guess what? I jumped in the cab, went two blocks up, got it sold up at this at, at, at the um, hospital, St. Francis Hospital in San Francisco. And guess what? Went back on the track to get a pimp money. Mm. The father called Kenny and said, oh, my mouth got busted. I want to come home. But if I would have called my first folks, he would have been like, come on, baby. Mm. It was see, it's too different. But Kenny Red didn't play like that. Kenny Red didn't play that, bitch. Go get my money. And you like that better? Well, it was just what it was. Mm. I loved Kenny. Mm. So whatever he said, it was his is that, is that, And that is, that's, that's the culture. Like, if you really, really down with your pimp when you out there... And you you do exactly what he tells you because you know he got your better interests at heart. He do. I ain't never been left in jail. But like little gaga Google shit like that, like Kenny would have been like, girl, if you don't get your lips sewed up and go get my money. And that's what I did. I went and got my lips stitched up and went back out to the track. What did Kenny say when he seen you? Because he I seen told him the next. I told him when he seen me. And what like, he said. This motherfucker kicked me in my lip. He was like, oh. <laughs> it wasn't nothing. It was like, oh, I me, mean, not like, oh, but damn, you, at least you went and got it, you know, taken right. care of. But it wasn't like, oh, baby, oh, God. No, that. Mm. You're going to stay at home for a whole week until it heals mm -hmm. up. No. No, he going to give me some neosporin and some goddamn peroxide and be like, bitch, go get a pimp's money. Wow. And, and that's so, what it is. But it, it's because because when you're dealing with that lifestyle. It comes with it. It not, not only come, comes with it. It comes with it, but you also used to live in a certain lifestyle when you're doing it a so serious life so that lifestyle has to be afforded yeah right. so you can't afford to say oh you live done this no you got to you do gotta it. go get some money i know i got bills you I got did. days off well sometimes i remember one time i went four years without a day off but not like straight working <laughs> four years but like if the if the track was hot then you bitch you know can go in the house you know what i'm saying but it wasn't like a planned but four day. years straight yeah, well, you know, my mom's birthday, I might fly and go see her and something like that. But on uh, holidays, you know, I, I didn't been on the whole show on Christmas shit. I didn't got Christmas money from tricks, all kind of stuff. But how, but what's the most money you made in a month? You probably were averaging. A lot of money, but you know, grand back a in month. the 80s, More than that. these girls now these days, they can't even go on a 30 day run. Like, they can't go straight 30 days without, you know, just stacking their money. They, because they, it's just, it's just not the same. But if you love Kenny Red so much, why did you leave him? Why did I leave him? Because I got tired of getting pimped on in cold chili blood. Like I said, sometimes you stop eating steak because it's not healthy for you. You start eating chicken or eating fish. That don't mean you hate the steak. So I just, I just got tired of getting pimped on. So you went to another pimp? No, that, or I you went, just quit? No, I went to the Nation of Islam. Okay. I was looking for wow. God. Okay. So you went to the nation. You started going to like like Juma service? I was going to MGT classes. I was going to the uh, meetings. Why the nation and not just Christianity no, or any I other one? Because I'm a queen and I just wanted to know who I okay. was. You know what I'm saying? Because to me, Christianity equals slavery. To okay. me. You know okay. what I'm saying? And um, Explain that. Because that's how they, 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 they kept slaves in check. You know, I get it. I'm not gonna go there with you because yeah, because you when you start talking about politics, yeah, and, uh, and religion, and religion, yeah, man, it, it's, a it's a touchy subject. To, yeah, it's a touchy cause because because at the end of the day, you just it's it's the way you're taught. If you're taught a certain way, and, and and like you like to be led, I see what you're saying. You like to be led by what you believe in, and and if you're believing in it, there should be a structure around and a culture of people that's going to lead you in the right direction. And so you're saying that whole culture and the way that it's being taught and the way you understand it causes you to be in slavery. Mm -hmm. That's what you're saying. Mm -hmm. You took the words right out of my mouth. Are you are still a Muslim right now? Um, no, I don't claim no nothing. No, no. I'm just a child of the king. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm a spiritual child of God. I don't want to be in no 
category. You know what I mean? I've done it. I've been to the synagogue. I've been to the mosque. I've been to the church house. You know, and I have a relationship with God personally myself. I like that. And that's all that counts. And that's really what counts is when you have a, it's between you and God. And I think a lot of times people can't live with that. They so quick to, to say this or say that because they're trying to figure out a way to cover up their insecurity and their belief. Right. So for, for, for you to believe a certain way doesn't make me feel no less of a person than what I believe in when you're mature, but most people are immature. So they can't figure out how to, deal with you because of how you feel about God because they don't trust what they feel and believe. Well, they need to read Joshua chapter (laughs) 2. They need to read Joshua chapter 2 and read about Rahab because I'm the modern day Rahab. Hey, I like that. I like that a lot. So, um, going back to just being on the track and and being a a real... Not just the track because I didn't been to the track, to the con, to the... To the concrete, to, concrete, to, the, to carpet. the carpet. Correct. And when you I say track, be... you mean a train track for real. Oh, no. I'm wondering. I'm, I'm, no. sorry, I'm green, green. So when people saying track, I'm like, okay, you're you talking about a train one? track? Choo, choo. Ah! <laughs> you, know the, you don't know. No. That's the track is stuff. the way the That's whole where, show, they, where the girls like, are. Where I took you down there and showed you where, where like, well, I didn't show you. We was on Harry. It was on the street. Yeah, on Harry it's just like a yeah. street. Same thing. Yeah, like on Harry Hines where they're all Correct. Yeah. Like in, I like love in you Oakland. so much. <laughs> like in you Oakland. don't know nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she's a good girl. Yeah, good as hell. In, in Oakland, it's East 14. <laughs> You know, um, okay. Um, Phoenix, every city Sam got Bowles, it. Every city got it. Different tracks in different okay. cities. Okay, because we keep saying tracks. You say two, two. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I'm thinking it was I a keep train right track. Down. I'm like, they got him on the a train. Red, the little red train that could. <laughs> she trying. <laughs> My so, red baby trying. So, so I'm thinking what I what I was trying to figure out was like when you when you're looking at that and you see the track and you see all of the different levels, um, and you catch a what is a, when you got a renegade, so, somebody on. who basically, I just basically Ooh. running around doing whatever you know that's without no guidance, with no guidance that. What do y'all? What do you? What do you? Explain that to me. A renegade. A renegade is a bitch that don't got no pimp. Mm-hmm. And I people talk down on renegades, but I'm not going to sit here and talk down on no renegade because she had to become a renegade because she had a sour apple. Mm-hmm. She got a hold to a bad P.I. Mm-hmm. or an imposter. And I feel like all renegades was gung-ho, like was down, like I'm ready for this. I'm going to be down for my man. And they did something terrible to him. You know, fucked their money off or was fucking other bitches or just doing something out of pocket, not, you know, going by the rules. And that's what made them a renegade. They didn't just wake up and say, I'm going to be a renegade today. No, they had some bad pimping. Somebody pimping was stanking. Damn. And that's what made her a renegade. So I'm not going to sit here and talk about no renegade bitches like, oh, I don't fuck with renegades and shit like that. That renegade was a hoe, man. She was a hoe at first. Mm -hmm. And she got mispimped on and became a renegade. Do some renegades come back into the game of the people? Yeah, some of them do. Some of them can come back and they, you know, go to rehabilitation. They got whole rehabilitation also. <laughs> really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. What, what is that? that? Yeah, what yeah, is yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. That's you, you, you done been so out of pocket and just been doing such just it's out a class? Just, just doing just everything. Renegades just doing right. everything until they meet the right folks that get them back on the right track. Right. Like mm-hmm. on not on the track of the whole track, <laughs> but on the right level, on the right Rhythm, you so know what I'm saying? When y'all talking the right about guidance, you know what I mean? Yeah, I got you. When y'all talking about a track and then you talk about concrete, then okay, so let me ask, you, what is the concrete? <laughs> concrete is the track, the blade, all that same the place. Same, same place, place. Okay. Yeah. right? So, and then the carpet is like the casinos and you know going on that's escort what calls I, okay. and to fancy houses and mansions. So you do and, level up from just the track. Maybe you can level. Tired, everybody can level up. You're tired of being on the on the street on the track. You like. Waiting for somebody to call you and say, okay, meet me here, go here, and you're not really out there anymore. Is that how it goes? So that's I, carpet. That's carpet. But right. When, you do, when you're online and when you're online. you got dates calling you and booking with you, you know what I mean? Like, 
you know, Priceline.com, you're booked okay. up, you're booked and busy. You know, yeah. and, you know what I didn't realize? Yeah. Like when we be in Vegas, it's certain girls that sit at those slot machines yes. and the casino knows these people. They know what they're doing and a lot of times they run them out. Yeah, they do the 86 and out of the um, That's hotel. right. I've seen this. And, I've been 86. What? I've been 86 but out of a whole bunch of hotels. We be laughing because a lot of times we be walking around. Like if we do walk the strip, we be walking and we, we're like, okay, that's a hoe. That right, you guys be people watching. Yeah, we be people watching. We <laughs> know because you see. That's a hoe. Yeah, you, that's you a can hoe. know. You can tell. You can, no te- you can tell. She's a slut. <laughs> you can tell she out for the weekend just to just to have party. You can. It's all, t- all different people, types. Tell. People fly in to Vegas all the time when conventions are going on. They fly in just for that. It's just hoeing jumping off in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Big hoeing. That's what I'm saying. That's why I was telling you. Like that's the mecca, right? I, I wouldn't say that, but. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's the Mecca, but. So where is the can, Mecca then? The Mecca. I haven't found that yet. <laughs> That's the biggest said, place. They said it's Dubai, but I ain't going to yeah, Dubai. Yeah, you know what? I'm about is. to be a porter potty. Because I'm not about to get shit and pissed on. Because that's what they doing in Dubai. Really? They shitting and pissing on these bitches. Wow. And they giving them $40,000. Yeah, they got money up there, though. They giving them 40000 man. So you wouldn't do that for 40000 Hell to the no. How much money it would take for somebody? To shit and piss on me? Yes. I'll kill them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. That's like, that's not even prostitution no more. No. That's, that's a, selling your son. Mm. Yeah. That's a, that ain't even no good, clean, holy hoeing. I got to ask you. You know what I'm saying? A holy hoe. So, okay, so in today's society, where, because you've been doing this a long time, you did this before social media, right? Yeah, I had so, a pager. Okay. Before so, cell phone. So, but with social media, when social media came in place, how does social media work with her hoeing game? I wouldn't know because that ain't my lane. You know what I'm saying? I don't do OnlyFans and all that. I didn't even have GPS. Mm. I used to have to just like write it down on a napkin. Turn right there at the big red barn. Get off on this exit. And then if you go right here, you're going to see a green tree. Turn here. And then I had to make it to that trick's house. Mm -hmm. Because if not, I'll have a dry run. So I know how to follow instructions real good. These girls wouldn't know what to do without their GPS. Yeah. I had a pager. And I had to stop at this telephone booth like Superwoman. Have you ever had to, like, like once you were done with a trick, had to call another trick to pick you up because that other trick was, you know, didn't have no way to get you back to the track? What you mean? I got a pimp to pick me up. Well, oh, I got been, a trick okay. picking me up so he could rob me after I didn't date the last trick. Oh, he robbing? I mean, I don't know what I'm calling <laughs> trick for. That's what my pimp for. So he gonna, he'll, do the, he'll pick it he up. He's going to pick me up. He got a, probably a flunky or somebody that's going, an assistant pimp. You know what I'm saying? That's going, you know, pick me up if he can't. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Somebody going to reach out. Okay. So, um, what is the, okay, you've heard a lot of lines from, you heard a lot of lines from a lot of green. What is the most ridiculous line you've ever heard a green ever say? A green, what you mean? Like me, like what you call a green. A line? Line, like. Somebody said, uh, oh, question. I thought a question or a statement about hoes. Uh, What's uh, the most ridiculous? Uh, the ridiculous. Uh, do we drink, huh? <laughs> Girl, hell no. Ain't nobody no throat babies around here. And that's the most common question that a square asks. Oh, okay. Because they've been used to going without rubbers and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have females come around me. And they be like, I don't like the way the rubber tastes. I be like, but you like the way that semen tastes? I be like, let me give you some game, baby. Use these Trojans. Don't ever use a lifestyle because it's going to pop. Mm. And you're going to be living a lifestyle. Mm. You're going to be living a lifestyle with AIDS, mm-hmm. disease, and stuff that you ain't going to never get rid of. Wow. You know, people be worried about a baby. Bitch, ain't you worried about getting AIDS? Mm-hmm. Going without rubbers and stuff, that's like, that is just bad. That's like, that's down low. Mm -hmm. Don't go without no rubber. That's just like, that's just, I don't care if it, I don't care if it's Dr. Frankenstein. Don't go without a rubber. Do not ever go without a rubber. So let me ask you this. What's the name of you guys' show again before we get off of here? 
Um, me and Pippin Ken. You and Pippin Ken, my man, Pippin Ken. Pippin Ken, man. Uh, a view from the game. We're going across country. You know what I'm saying? We coming to a city near you. Wow. And and how can people uh, get a hold of you and follow your page and follow the movement? Well, you can catch me on all social media platforms. And my name is Hustle Mom Martina on all of them. And my email is the same at gmail.com. If you ever wanted to book me for any um, anything, you know, well, if you want me to come see your grandpa and break on him, call me. Hey, I, I got to ask you this one thing. Didn't I see you on TMZ before I let you go out? Didn't I see you on yeah, TMZ? What was, was you doing on there? I was on there giving it up for E-40 one time, yeah. <laughs> letting Harvey and, um, you know, and, uh, and Charles know that E-40 is the best rapper in the whole world to make. You know what I'm saying? His catalog is longer than the Golden Gate Bridge. You know what I mean? And uh, if you don't know about the click when he first started, you know what I'm saying? You're not a real E-40 follower, you know? His song, Mr. Flamboyant, Be Legit, D-Shot, you know what I'm saying? Sugar T, you know what I mean? Yeah, straight up out of Vallejo. Yeah, E-40, that's my man, you know? Earl Stevens. The goon with the spoon. So I'm, I'm me and me and uh, Miss Jamaica gonna come up there. We gotta come to your your side of town so we can get down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you gotta go see Mister um, Fabby Davis. Okay. Go to Dope Era. Okay. You cannot come to Oakland without going to Dope Era. Okay. You got to go. Got it. Man, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. We love you, Martina. I love and you guys. And we love Hustle Mom, man. Like I said, you you dope interviewer. Uh, appreciate the love, man, for coming on Boss Talk 101, man. I hope you're enjoying Dallas while you're here. Yes. Man, and I hope you'll come back. Uh, I, knowing Pimpin' Ken and the movement, you're going to end up back in Dallas. Yes, mm -hmm. This is one of his main places where he be in for show. Yes, so I, I know. love it. Man, it's, it's real, it's, it's real, uh, what, down south? Yes. It is, and I love it. I love the grammar. I love your guys, the way you guys the way speak. We talk. The way yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, when you come to California, you're going to hear our lingo, and it's just going to be a future shock. <laughs> man, hold up, man. Say, man, hey, it's been another great segment. Of Boss Talk 101. Where the bosses talk, man. And we out. Thank